Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson. I'm Clayton Oliphant, one of the pastors of the church. We welcome all of you to this service of worship. It's Father's Day and it's a very special day to celebrate our fathers. I hope that you are doing that, whether they are living or uh, have gone on to glory, that this is a very special day as you remember and celebrate your fathers and those who have been like fathers to you. We uh, do encourage you to register your attendance, the registration, um, tab uh, is above the screen if you're watching on live stream it's in the comment section about now on facebook sign in and let us know that you're here today we are so excited about next saturday we want to invite you to come to the campus next saturday for a drive-through celebration we have a wonderful uh, event planned it's going to be um, stay in your car but uh, get to see people and we'll have music we'll have special activities for the for the children we have um, uh, a, a donation station for network of community ministries if you can bring canned goods food and toiletries that would be very very helpful and uh, just a wonderful time to to say thank you to you for being such an amazing congregation. I know we've missed seeing each other. This is a way that we can see each other and celebrate together as a family of faith. We hope that you'll join us for this celebration next Saturday morning. We also have a new opportunity, uh, a dial-in option on the phone for listening to our service. If you know uh, people who don't have access to a phone or a computer where they can watch the service, they can dial in on the number on your screen and, um, and receive our, our full worship service through that, that phone connection. Again, we're so glad that you're here today. It truly is a blessing to come together on this Father's Day and celebrate the good news of God's love. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
beautiful hymn. Would you join me in a special prayer honoring fathers of all kinds on this Father's Day? For fathers everywhere who have given us life and love that we may show them grace and love in return. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers. For fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. Holy God, hear this prayer for our fathers that mourn. For men who, though without children of their own, act like fathers and have nurtured and cared for us. Holy God, hear this prayer for our father figures. For stepfathers who have assumed that role with love and joy, who have loved the children of another as their own and created a new family. Holy God, hear this prayer for stepfathers. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to the needs of their children and have not sustained their families. Holy God, have mercy on struggling fathers. For new fathers full of hope, for longtime fathers full of wisdom, for the fathers yet to be and fathers soon to be. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of your church, for those that have shaped our lives without claim of family or kinship, for those who have taught us, guided us, shaped us, and molded us into servants of Christ our Lord. Holy God, hear our prayer for the fathers of our faith, God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us take a look at a special video highlighting some of the things that children in our congregation love about their dads.
Now, as we come to the time of prayer in our service, I invite your attention to the link that takes you to the bulletin so you can see our list of joys and concerns. I invite you to pray for each of these names throughout the week as we live into our vows to pray for one another. Will you join your hearts with mine as we go to God in prayer? God, our God, you are Father of us all. And on this day, when we celebrate fathers everywhere, we rejoice in the ones that are good, who give us life and hope, and who share with us what it means to be a person in your world. For the good times, for fishing trips and camping, we thank you. We pray for those whose fathers are absent or have passed away, or failed to live up to their calling as fathers. Bless the children who never knew their parents. God, on this day we celebrate what it means to be church together, being in one place at one time and sharing all things, holding all things in common, holding one another as sister, and brother. God, create in us that sense of community and belonging which the early church had. Help us to be the kind of people who live for one another, who live for your world, so that all may know your love and goodness. Give us a sense of your dwelling spirit that we may be filled with love and compassion. God, we pray for all of those who are still on the front lines of this COVID virus. Keep them safe. We pray for police, firefighters, first responders of all sorts. We also pray for communities of color, indigenous people, and folks everywhere struggling under systems of oppression. May their voices be heard, and may they all be safe. Grant healing to our nation. Make us whole. Make us one. Unify us and give us strength that it may be well for us. Have that start here in your church that we all may know what it is to be together and to be one. This we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The ministry and mission of First United Methodist Church of Richardson continues even though our building is closed. I invite you to give of your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings using the link or texting your pledge to the number or by uh, mailing in your check. Will you give generously to the support of the mission of our church? Peace. 
Bishop, and I am so glad that you are with us today for children's time. I just think about how many people I have seen in the last few weeks and months learning to ride their bikes. And one thing that I think is really important is that everyone I've seen learn to ride their bike has done it with the encouragement of somebody else. Dads are running along, helping to make sure you're steady and teaching you to pedal and encouraging you every pedal of the way as you have learned to ride off all by yourself. You know, today's Bible story, the scripture that we're going to hear is about a man named Barnabas. And Barnabas actually means son of encouragement. So I want you to think about all the people that have encouraged you to learn something new, all the people who have helped you learn to ride your bike, or something else that you really wanted to do, but you were unsure of. I think sometimes what we need most is someone who just believes in us and helps us believe in ourselves. So as you think about what this week will look like for you, I want you to find ways to be an encourager, to be the one who teaches someone else that they can do something new. So before we go, let's say a little prayer. Are you ready? Let's pray. Amazing God, thank you for fathers and father figures who have encouraged us and taught us and believed in us. Help us find ways to encourage others around us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all have a great day. Today's scripture passage comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. Listen now for God's word. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, 
For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, April, for sharing those words from the scriptures. It truly is a blessing to come together on this Father's Day and celebrate together in our faith and, and to remember our fathers and those who've been like fathers to us. Um, I've talked about my father before and what a profound influence he, um, he was and is on my life and, um, and the difference that he made in my life and the amazing encouragement that he gave me along the way. I find that so many people today just need a word of encouragement. And you know that um, in the world it, it, with COVID-19 realities and, and um, all of, the, all of the, the situations in which we find ourselves as a society, people, many people I talk to are discouraged. They need a word of encouragement. They need someone to be in their corner. I think that's one of the reasons the church is here, to be in people's corner, to remind people of God's love and to give a word of encouragement. And today I want to talk about encouragement. And to do so, I want to, I want to talk about one of my, um, one of my encouragers uh, through the years, and that's my high school basketball coach. I, I, Tom Adams was a legend at St. Mark's School of Texas. I've told you that I grew up in Louisiana, but we moved over here when I was in junior high school and went to high school at St. Mark's. Tom Adams was a history teacher at St. Mark's for 47 years. He taught uh, U.S. history, government, uh, art history. His art history lectures were legendary. And he coached basketball and baseball. He won 21 titles uh, in basketball and baseball. And um, I was privileged to play on his team. I, I was a very average, maybe even below average, um, maybe outstandingly below average high school basketball player. And um, the career was not exactly what I had hoped it would be when I had visions of being Pete Maravich. But um, it did, you know, it, did, it, it was a lot of fun to play for Tom Adams. And um, he, would, he would do things that would just um, it would stick in my mind his encouragement to us and the way that he saw things in us that we didn't see in ourselves, the way that he called forth our gifts. One time before a game, he, he pulled me aside and he, and he said, I, I'm putting you on this guy that's 6'7", and he's all state, and I need you to shut him down, but tonight I need you to be six foot five. Can you be six foot five for me tonight? I was like, yes, sir, coach, but I'm 5'11", but I'll be six foot five for you tonight. And he would, he would just call that out in you, that, that he needed you to do something, and he would, he would challenge you to rise to the level uh, that he needed you to play. And, and he just he drew out of us uh, so much more than, than what we were capable of doing. One time, um, and I told this at his retirement, his second retirement, he flunked his first retirement. So he was coaching up until two years ago. He was the assistant basketball coach. And I was invited to say a few words at his uh, second retirement. And I told the story about how uh, we were playing a team and they had one of the leading scorers in the Dallas area. And he put me on him. He said, I need you to shut him down. I need you to, to be there and, and guard him and shut him down. If he goes to get a drink of water, I need you to go get a drink of water with him. I need you to just be on him. And uh, I was very honored that he asked me to guard this really top-notch player and I was also proud that I held him to 13 points in the one minute that I guarded him. So it didn't go so well. But, uh, but that, was, that was a great, he cracked up when I told that story. I don't know if you're laughing or not. But um, Tom, uh, through the years, has, has been an encourager of mine. Um, a note would come in the mail and he would just say he was proud of me. 
Um, he came to a, a funeral here at our church last fall. And, and afterwards, we had a wonderful visit. And he was so encouraging to the very end. He, my last visit with, with him was at that funeral. And, and he was such an encourager of mine. He had an amazing way of seeing in you more than you saw in yourself. One of the last things he said to me after that funeral was that was one of the finest eulogies I've ever heard. Well, coach, I hope this is a fitting eulogy for you to tell you that I love you and you made a difference in my life and I've been encouraged by you. Is there any greater gift than encouragement? Is there any greater gift that a person can offer to another person than to be an encouraging presence, to lift people up when they're feeling down, to, to call forth their gifts, to encourage them to, to pick back up when they've fallen down, to get back up and to, to keep going? It's an amazing thing that... Um, that we have the opportunity to do on a daily basis. And I believe that God has put us in this world to be encouraging, to be an encouraging presence to others. I think that's part of the role of Christians. And it's lifted up in the early church as an example of, of what it means to be a follower of Christ, those who encourage others. So today I wanna to tell you a story about a man named Joseph. And you've heard of Joseph before, um, Joseph, there's, there's a Joseph in the Old Testament. I'm not going to talk about the Joseph in the Old Testament. And some of you may be thinking, well, I'm going to talk about the father of Jesus, that Joseph. Well, no, that's not the Joseph I want to talk about either. I want to talk about Joseph, whom the disciples nicknamed Barnabas. He was part of the early church. He was one of the early followers of Jesus. And we're told in Acts chapter 4 about this time when all who were in the church were of one heart and soul. They, they, um, they gave to each other. They had things in common. Uh, they gave their testimony about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them. There was not a needy person among them. Because if there was anyone who had a need, people would sell proceeds, pro so, sell things that they had and used the proceeds to help those who were in need. So um, you have this, this character that's introduced at this time, then named Joseph in verse 36 of chapter 4. Thus Joseph, who was surnamed by the, apostle, the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, he was a Levite, a native of Cyprus. He sold a field which belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. He was so um, taken with the grace of God. He was so captured by the good news of resurrection of Jesus. He so much wanted to be a part of this community that helped those in need and was, was spreading this encouraging word of God's love for the world that he used his own assets. He sold a field and used the money to further the mission. I love this story because I think it, it captures something of the, the heart of what it means to be a part of the, the family of Christ, what it means to be a disciple of Christ, that we all have a, a role to play and all of us can be encouragers in this movement we call Christianity. So the first thing I wanna point out about uh, Joseph is that he was generous and selfless. He was generous and selfless. Generosity was in his spirit. He was willing to part with something that was precious to him in order for something greater to take place. And I think this is a, an important characteristic of those of us who call ourselves followers of Christ, that we're called to be selfless. I think that's one of the things that, that Jesus and, and, and throughout the writings of the New Testament, there's this call to stop being selfish, which is our nature, and be selfless. 
to live for a purpose greater than just ourselves, to live beyond ourselves for others. There's something powerful about, about people when they do that, that we live for a greater purpose, a higher calling, and it's not just about us, it's about how we can be a part of blessing others and doing something great in God's name. I think that um, as you look at Joseph, you, you, you get an idea of what it means to, to really be a loving presence in the world, to be so caught up in the, the grace of Jesus Christ that you would do anything for others to also experience that grace, that you would be willing to part with something precious in order to, for others to experience the joy of that love. I, I, I would ask you a question. What is the equivalent of your field? Barnabas had a field that he sold and he did so so that the mission could be furthered. What's that equivalent in your life? What would you gladly part with in order that those you love would be blessed? that those around you might have a greater sense of the joy of living. Fathers, I think this is a, a calling for us uh, as fathers, that there are times in life when we're called to set aside our own agenda to pour out for our family, to pour out for our, our, our wives, our, our, our children, and, and there's something powerful that happens when we do that, that there's this sense of joy that comes from, from learning to be selfless and learning to be generous. That it's not about us, it's about how can we further this, this greater purpose for our loved ones. And I think, I think that this is um, the heart of the Christian faith. It's learning to be selfless. So Barnabas, the son of encouragement, was for the, the Christian church, the early Christian church, a source of great uh, pride and, and encouragement for this church. As they lived together in the grace of God, here's this man who was such an encouraging presence, uh, a loving father in their midst, who loved and encouraged them so much that they changed his name. They started calling him by a nickname. You're such a Barnabas. You're such a son of encouragement. That's one of the greatest things you could probably ever be called is to say about you that you are an encouraging presence. So he was selfless and generous in his spirit. And I think the challenge for us is to, to think about our own lives and how, how we can be selfless in order that something greater can, can happen, something greater can, can come to be because we participate in it in selflessness. The second thing about Barnabas is that he believed the best about people. You read in, in Acts chapter 9, if, you just do a, if you've ever done a character study through the Bible, Barnabas is a fascinating character study. And as we're studying the book of Acts, this is a good um, character trace to look through the traits of this particular character and trace those traits all through the book of Acts. So in Acts chapter 9, you have uh, Saul's conversion. We're going to be talking about that next week. And Saul is converted, becomes known as Paul. And he is the chief enemy of the church. He's the one who's tried to destroy this movement called Christianity and these followers of Christ. And um, he was converted, had this amazing conversion experience. And at this time, then, he comes to Jerusalem to attempt to join the disciples. And uh, in Acts chapter 9, verse 26, it says they were afraid of him and they did not believe that he was a disciple. Well, would, wouldn't you think that if he were, were the chief enemy of the church and suddenly he tries to become one of you, wouldn't you have suspicions too? But then in verse 27, it says, But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him and how at Damascus... He had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So Barnabas, even though Paul has given the disciples reason not to believe that his story is true, Barnabas sees the good in Paul. 
Barnabas sees Paul's heart. He sees that Paul has truly been changed, that he's truly been converted, and he speaks a word on his behalf to those disciples in Jerusalem. He advocates for him. He believed the best about him. I think that's a powerful thing that um, an encourager can do is just to advocate for people around you, to be uh, someone who believes the best about people and not the worst about people. Later in chapter 11, you have this, uh, this scene where the news comes to uh, Jerusalem of all these great things happening at Antioch. And it says they, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he came, because, you know, they're, they're wondering what, what's happening at Antioch. We keep hearing these things, but we're not sure we trust what's happening there. So they send Barnabas to check it out. So Barnabas goes and it says when he came and saw the grace of God, Barnabas was glad. And he exhorted them to, to uh, all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a large company was added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Paul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for a whole year, they met with the church, taught a large company of people. And in Antioch, the disciples were for the first time called Christians. Here's just a little snippet from the early church history. A little snippet from from our early church uh, story that tells about one man who made a profound difference in the life of the church. Here he is as an encourager and someone who advocates for others, someone who saw the good in people, saw the good in situations. Do you know people like that in your life? I mean, people like that who, who absolutely have this way of seeing life that they can see the best when all you can see is despair and hopelessness. They are able somehow to see that God is at work for good. They're able to see the good in people. Even when the world looks like it's lost its way, there are Barnabases in the world who see the good in people. They see the people who are helping. They see the people who are blessing. And they point out the good in the world. The church has an opportunity to be like Barnabas. The church, the people who follow Christ have an opportunity in this world to remind people of the good in life, of our good God, and of this, this God who not only loves the whole world, but offers salvation through His Son, offers resurrection and new hope and new life. This was Barnabas' role. This is what, how the early church was formed. People like Barnabas, who were so filled with the Holy Spirit, so filled with the joy of the Lord, that it overflowed to others around them. Do you know a Barnabas? Could you be a Barnabas? Is there someone around you who needs you to be a Barnabas? One more thing about Barnabas that I'd point out for us is that uh, Barnabas didn't give up on people. You know, he, he believed the best about people. He was an encouraging presence. He was selfless, but he didn't give up on people. And here in chapter 15 of the book of Acts, there's this critical moment in the life of the church. And in this moment, it, there's a division between Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas have traveled together. They have been partners in spreading the word of God they have been uh, uh, together in missional ventures as they've gone to share the good news of Jesus from town to town. But here uh, it says in, in chapter 15, at the end of chapter 15, verse 20, 36, after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, come, let us return and visit the brothers and sisters in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. And Barnabas wanted to take with them John, who is called Mark. But Paul th thought it best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. So John Mark had gone with them on a, on a trip to Asia and then he had, 
he'd gotten homesick or maybe he had a girlfriend back home, who knows what happened, but John Mark left and went away. So Paul's put, put out with him, Paul's done with him. He said, well, I'm not gonna take that guy because he let us down last, last time. Barnabas sees something in John Mark that Paul doesn't see. Barnabas sees some giftedness in John Mark. Even though he had failed before, Barnabas is able to somehow see the good in him and not to give up on him. And so he sa it says, um, and there arose a sharp contention so that so much so that they separated from each other. So Paul and Barnabas decide to part ways. They decide that Paul will take Silas and they'll go off on a venture and Barnabas will go with, with John Mark. And it says that then that, um, so Barnabas took Mark with him and they sailed away to Cyprus. Paul took Silas and they departed and being commended by the brethren to the grace of God, they went on their way. So here, here you have this, this amazing story from the history of the early church of this young man who fails, John who's called Mark. Some people believe that this is the Mark who wrote what's believed to be the first gospel written, the gospel of Mark. Some people believe this is the same Mark that wrote that gospel. And would he have ever accomplished that if not for a Barnabas in his life? If not for a Barnabas who would say to him after he had failed, I still believe you can do this. I believe you can play six foot five. I believe you can do this. I think you can go with us and you can make a difference and sharing the good news about Jesus. We need people like that in our lives, don't we? We need encouragers. There's enough downers in the world. There, there's enough haters in the world. There are enough people who love to put down others in the world. We've got plenty of that. What we need in this world are more people like Barnabas. We need those people who are encouraging. Who needs encouraging in your circle? Is there someone in your circle of friends or family members or coworkers, someone who lives in your neighborhood, someone in your sphere of influence who could use a word of encouragement? So many people are discouraged right now. So many people are down about life. So many people are hurting right now. And the church of Jesus Christ from its very founding is a fellowship of encouragement. Why not you? To spread an encouraging word. Why not you to, I mean, if you think about the word encourage, it literally means to encourage, to put the heart in to something to put the heart into someone. Put your heart into someone. I'm so thankful for those people who have encouraged me along the way. And I wonder if you would just stop today and say a word of thanks for those, maybe those fathers, maybe those people who've been like fathers. Maybe it's, it's someone who was a teacher or a coach someone who encouraged you and believed in you and saw something in you that you didn't see in yourself, how could you pay that forward to someone else? How could you today take a moment to write a note or make a call or send a text and just encourage someone who needs to be lifted up, someone that you see gifts in that may not see those gifts in themselves, who could make a difference in this world if they had a little encouragement. Maybe that's our calling on this Father's Day. Maybe that's the calling of our lives as followers of Christ, to be a community that encourages and blesses, a selfless community that is generous to a fault, that is willing to part with things precious to us in order that, that greater things may happen. A, a community where, where we 
see the good in people, even when the world doesn't. A community where we believe in each other and we don't give up on each other because we don't believe God ever gives up on us. Maybe that's our calling. That's who we're called to be and to be a difference, an encouraging difference in this world. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you so much for people like Tom Adams, people who encourage us along the way. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of uh, those Barnabases in our lives, those people who come alongside us at just the right moment and lift us up and bless us. And I pray today that if there's someone who needs a word of encouragement, that you would just place in their pathway a Barnabas. Help us to be that encouraging presence. The world is so uncertain and we're walking into the unknown and people need to know that they matter to you. People need to know that you are an encouraging God who loves us and cares for us. We pray all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. Today, if there's someone who would join our church family, we would love to have you as part of our, our family and fellowship here at First United Methodist Church Richardson. If you would send us an email at join at fumcr.com, that's join at fumcr.com, we would love to have someone get in touch with you this week and talk to you about what it means to be a member of this church. If you have any questions about what it means to be a follower of Christ or a member of the church, just send an email to that address and we'll be in touch with you. Thank you for joining us for this Father's Day worship service. We, again, are so glad to have you with us. We hope, again, to see you on Saturday. There'll be information on our website and on Facebook about this drive through event, 9 to 10.30 next, next Saturday morning. Um, we want to see you. We want to say thank you to you. And this is a way that we can see each other in person and say thank you from a safe distance. And um, we're just really hopeful that you'll come and be a part of this celebration next Saturday. Go forth now in God's love. Know that you are loved. You are blessed in order that you might be a blessing. Let's go into the world and be like Barnabas. Let's be an encouraging presence. The world is in need of encouragement. People you know are in need of encouragement. In the name of Christ, let's love people and encourage them to be better than they ever dreamed they could be. Amen.